On the outside, I'm this like 25 year old about to turn 26, you know, I was like one of the first people to be out in my high school. I was like super out in my college. I now do YouTube videos where I'm like hella out. I'm going to like all these conferences to speak specifically about LGBT issues and be this kind of like community spokesperson in a way. But I've never had a girlfriend. Hey, so I thought we would have a little sit down today and talk about a topic that I've written about um, before, including in a mini essay in Hannah Witten's book, Doing It. You know, if you're straight, there's this idea that you can pretty much find romance everywhere. That, you know, you can just be like in high school and have a crush, or you can be in college and there'd be someone in your lecture that you fancy, or, you know, you can be in your workplace and there might be, or in your friendship group, or, you know, 101 Dalmatian style, you could be walking your dogs and you get tangled up together and then you fall in love. And obviously that idea of love at first sight is this kind of idealised and fictionalised version. But I think it's important to note the fact that like you can, as a straight person, you can go into pretty much any situation and there's going to be someone like it's you can kind of assume that other people around you will be straight as well and therefore you might have these worries of like oh if I ask this person out will they reject me will I be humiliated will they say that they don't like me you know will it ruin our friendship and and those kind of worries are also worries that queer people can have but there's this added element on top of it of like what if they're not queer themselves am I going to put myself in danger by putting myself out there are they going to turn out to be homophobic you know what what does that look like? If you don't want to be kind of like rejected in a dangerous situation, if you don't know people are queer, where can you go? Well I suppose you could go to like an LGBT only space, but what does that look like? Most of the time that looks like an 18 plus space, right? That looks like bars and clubs that are specifically like alcohol oriented. And so if you're in high school it's like well where what can you do? And when I was in school, I actually went to this big conference that was being organised with, you know, different educators and charities. And they were saying that they, you know, five years previously had been really, really worried about straight girls online and child predators and all this kind of stuff. But increasingly there was this worry for um, queer boys in particular using dating apps, not necessarily to try and hook up with these guys, but, you know, lying about their age in order to just even, like, meet someone who was queer, because it was something that they hadn't experienced before, and it was so difficult to find anyone that they were like, well, this is the only way that I can see that happening, because there was really, like, a lack of provisions in terms of, like, you know, LGBT youth groups or anything like that. So when I went to university, I was super out. I was, like, the first thing that I would say to anyone, like, and it kind of became a recurring joke amongst my friends, I would be like, hello, I'm Rowan, I'm gay. You know, the first meeting I went to, I ran for the LGBT welfare position and got it and then you know I ran for positions uh, in the main university LGBT society and I ended up being you know the president of the LGBT society so I was super super out but I went on three dates my entire time I was at university and even me being someone who was so comfortable in myself who was so outspoken who was part of these big campaigns or whatever like I did not hold their hands during those dates like deliberately there was this like nervousness and this internalized panic of like what would happen if if I did and also to be around a lot of my kind of straight friends who are almost like falling into relationships like didn't even mean to they were like oh no oh, it's just happened because of this ease of the fact that like everyone around them had the capacity to be attracted to them or to kind of be interested in them in romantically and and that was just something that I didn't have. It was very much like, well, I have to make the decision to seek out these people. I have to make a decision to, like, join this dating app, to find a queer dating app in the first place, which is easier said than done. And then to, like, scroll through what ends up becoming a lot of, like, straight men being on there, um, girls who are asking you for to come and have a threesome with their boyfriends, you know, that becomes really difficult as well. And you also have to be super out to be using these apps, right? So, like, I was, but I know a lot of people who aren't necessarily like they could very well have been dating someone really low-key but they didn't want to put that information out into like the public sphere as it were because that means that you're potentially can be outed to anyone am i going to talk about this yeah okay i'm going to talk about this um so when i finished university i had like a really really rough time um with the idea of like what i saw then as this like perpetual life and existence as a queer woman of loneliness that oh get a little bit upset that I just couldn't see a reality in which I ended up with someone 
And I think it kind of has been useful for me seeing these other people who are around my age talking about the idea of like it taking longer for queer people to start having these similar experiences because like my straight friends like god like so many of them are getting married and having kids and babies and stuff like they've been in relationships long enough <laughs> to decide that that's what they want to do and it's like it's not necessarily that it's easy but it's there's so many hurdles that they don't have to jump or think about and like I was, when I was at, at school, like, I remember girls asking me, like, don't you want to get married? Like, about me being gay, they were like, you know, but you've got long hair, but whatever, don't you want to get married and wear a lovely dress? And, like, at that point it was illegal for me to do that. And that was just something that, you know, being that age and knowing that, like, at that point it was like, well, you're never actually going to be able to have this fairy tale, even if you manage to, like, try and find someone that you love and who loves you because you won't actually be able to have these things that that other people can have and you know girls in my school would say that like gay people shouldn't be allowed to have kids they should be allowed to adopt and there was just this idea of like all of these things that my peers were going to get I just wasn't going to have access to this is something that you know intersects with being some somewhere on the a spectrum is that like there's also an issue of you know what does I can't identify necessarily with how kind of heterosexual media paints relationships or how that's meant to work but I can't necessarily see what I see my relationship being in any lesbian media either which is very sex oriented so yeah this turned into a little bit more of a serious video I hope that this was in some way like enlightening or is something that resonates with you and that this isn't something that you're like dealing with alone um would love to hear your thoughts in the comments um, and I'm going to leave a link to my Patreon if you want to support these videos in the description along with links to all my social media so you can find me all over the internet. Um, and I'll tell you, see you next time. Bye!